Hey guys and welcome to Petroped and welcome to the new 2021 Mini Countryman JCW. Now I know for many of you the word Mini shouldn't really be associated with a car that big but there is much to discuss about this car. It shares an awful lot in common with my Clubman JCW and I think it's a really interesting proposition. Now, to be honest, I can't believe it's taken me this long to get a Countryman on the channel, being such a huge Mini fan. Now, I'm gonna be doing two videos with this car. You may well see over my shoulder, just over there, is my Clubman JCW. And I am gonna be doing a back-to-back -back comparison between this Countryman and the Clubman because they share much in common. They're both the JCW format, so have the same 306 horsepower, 450 newton meter, turbocharged four-cylinder engine, and the all four four-wheel drive system. So performance-wise, they are very similar, but clearly this is a big car, a compact SUV bearing the mini badge. Should that really be allowed? Is this really a kind of is it, is it a Mini at all? Well, it's certainly not Mini by size, but that doesn't mean to say it can't be Mini by the way it drives or by the way it feels. So let's take a quick walk around this latest 2021 version, and I want to start off with the front of the car. So there have been quite a few changes to the front of the new Countryman. The grille's different. And what I do like about the Countryman, and it differs it from all the other Minis in the Mini family range is the shape of the lights. I really like that. And when you get a, a view of the front, I think it looks mean and purposeful. And in this particular spec, we've kind of got the D-chrome surrounds to the lights and so on. But you can now get a D-chrome belt line from factory. And I don't understand why this particular car hasn't got it because all the other chrome has been deleted from the car apart from the belt line. So. I would do that. The other thing is the colorways on this car, the black and the red roof and the red contrast remind me a huge amount of my JCW Roadster. And I'm going to put this out here. For me, minis need stripes. I would have to have stripes on this car. And it's really interesting. I know many of you really don't like the stripes. And, and I know a few of you, because you've sent me pictures and so on, have, have bought a car that's had stripes. And the very first thing you do is take the stripes off. Well, the very first thing I'd do is put the stripes on. I certainly did that with my Roadster. I put side stripes. I just think it gives the car character. And I think Minis are one of the few cars that can carry off stripes really, really well. I'd also look into getting some front driving lamps just to make the front end of the car more Mini-esque. But from the front, I like it. The other thing that the Countryman doesn't have that the other cars in the range do is that I don't have a bonnet scoop. Now, in the F-Series Minis, the bonnet scoop is, is pointless on all the cars, unless you do what I've done to my Clubman, and that is to basically make the fake bonnet scoop a functional air intake. So you're not missing out on anything there, but at least that means you can't do what I've done to my Clubman and turn it into a functioning air intake, which is a bit of a shame. Let's go and take a look at the back, because the back of this car is very different from the Clubman. It's certainly a tall car, this, but yes, the back, obviously the biggest difference is I don't have the barn doors like I have in the Clubman. I've got a big opening tailgate, and I must say, there is a lot of boot space in here. It's certainly bigger than in the Clubman. And I'm going to save, if you like, a, a practicality test for the Clubman versus Countryman review. I want to see what I can get in there and just how easy it is, but that is the big difference. Now, I like my barn doors, but I know some of you don't, so that's something to bear in mind. In terms of uh, a little bit of styling differences, good news for me, they've got rid of the enormous mini badge that was on the old Countryman, which I never really liked. But it looks pretty good from the back. You've got the kind of Union flag tail lights, very, very subtle and kind of stealth-like in there. Twin exhausts. We'll talk more about the exhaust note when we're out and about driving. It's very, very similar to the Clubman, that's for sure. Um, I'm not so sure about this kind of, I don't know what that's trying to be, to be honest, that, that grill. But on the whole, 
pretty nice from the back. Now this car should be much, much bigger on the inside. Let's do rear passenger room first of all. I mean, certainly more space than in the back of my Clubman, although I must admit, I don't think I've ever actually sat in the back of my Clubman for a journey. But this is a far more spacious, bigger cabin because it's a bigger car. I've got loads of headroom. I am restricted in my leg room as an adult with very long legs. This seat is quite a long way back, but it's not, it's not uncomfortable in here. I could sit in here for a, a longer journey. You'd certainly get a couple of kind of small to medium sized kids in the back. So it is nice. The one thing I would say, first of you're sat up much higher than in, in a Clubman or in a hatch. It's a raised or elevated driving position. But for me, the thing that this particular spec of car is missing is the pan roof. It's quite dark in here, and I think that's accentuated by the, the kind of dark coloured seats and dark trim. And for £800, which is what the pan roof is, that, that for me would be an absolute must-have spec option if you were specking one of these from new. And if I was buying one of these on the used market, I would only look at ones with a pan roof because it just lightens the cabin up a lot. I love the pan roof in my car. Um, but yeah, not, not bad at all. Let's jump in the front. There's plenty to talk about in the front. There's plenty that I like. And there's a few things I'm not really that impressed with. Now then, where do we start? I know, let's fire up the engine and bring the displays to life. Obvious thing to start with is I now have the new digital dash that we first saw in Electric Mini, then we saw in GP3 and now is rolling out across the range. I like elements of it, but I'm really not a fan. And I'm not a fan for a couple of reasons. The first reason is an OCD reason. If I look directly over the steering wheel, the actual display is not in the middle of the steering wheel. It's just off to the left, and it's also twisted slightly. It's not perfectly straight ahead of me. And it doesn't really display a great deal of information. I've got a rev counter on the left and a massive fuel gauge on the right hand side and a digital speed readout in the middle. The gear indicator telling me which gear I'm in is tiny. So the first thing I'd do, this car doesn't have it, but I'd spec the Navigation Plus Pack. Now that is 1300 quid, but what that gives you is a head up display. And on the head up display, you then get a much better indicator you've basically got uh, speed, gear and revs, just like in the Clubman, and I love my head-up display. So I definitely have one of those, but I really am not a fan. And I know it's kind of progress, but I just think that display could be far better utilised. The good thing, however, is I've now got widescreen here, um, so I've got the widescreen nav option in my Clubman, but the thing that drives me insane in my Clubman is when I go and use Apple CarPlay, the car has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, in mine, it only comes across two thirds of the screen. And that absolutely does my head in. And then the, the final third of the screen tells me what media is playing or what radio station I'm in or, or, or whatever. This now has full screen Apple CarPlay. Brilliant. So when you go into your nav app or into, you know, you're starting to listen to stuff uh, and use it, it's full screen and that is brilliant. Now I believe there is a way of me upgrading mine to get full screen nav. If anybody knows the exact details, please let me know because I'd love to know. So that bit is very similar. I love the swoop of the dash. All of this is, is straight out of Clubman. It's the same, the same kind of uh, helicopter-like um, toggle switches. And I really like that. Steering wheel's nice. I've got um, uh, a wireless charge mat in here for my phone. Pretty sure it will be plagued with the same problems as my Clubman in that the phone overheats if it's in there for too long. Uh, and I've got plenty of storage bins uh, under there. I can put some stuff and lots of cable plug-in places for USB cables and stuff. So on the whole, it's nice. This car has been spec with the same uh, sports seats as mine. You can have the comfort seats as well, but I, I love these seats. They're very comfortable, very supportive. So when you are here, it actually feels quite a lot like the Clubman. The only or the big difference in driving position is you feel much higher up. 
And the worry you have when you sit in this car is you think, is that going to diminish the mini driving experience? What's it going to be like when you start pushing on? Well, there's only one way to find that out, and that is to basically take this car up the road onto some of my favourite roads and give it a good spanking because it's actually quite surprising. It drives brilliantly. Now the first thing to say about this car when you start driving is it has a mini familiarity about it. But it has a difference as well because of its size. It's a big old car this and, and some people just aren't going to like it. I'm going to put that to one side for a moment, maybe talk about it a little bit later. But first things first is the way this car carries itself on the road is very grown up and very mature, a little bit more mature than a Mini and I always said when we went from the R series Minis to the F series Minis I always described them as feeling more grown up. This feels even more grown up if that makes sense. It has a very competent ride and it just has a nice feeling about it. I'm just in the normal drive mode at the moment um, and the suspension is very smooth, it's, it's soaking up all the bumps, it's very un-Mini like in some respects. But this car has a lot of performance. Now, yes, we're testing the JCW, the top of the range countryman. But I have to say, for me, this car fills a really interesting niche for a family that wants a, a, a sporty feeling car, a car that can give them a grin factor on a Sunday morning, but that has more practicality than a Mini. And let's face it, that's what this car and that target segment this car is aimed at. It has a, a large boot, it has lots of interior space. It's super practical. You've got roof rails on the roof so you can put a roof box if you need to go away. You know, this is a proper family wagon. It ticks that box for sure. Now, I don't have kids, but we've got dogs and I've got bikes. And, and that, that makes this car very, very interesting to me. Having said that, my Clubman does all of those things. The challenge the Clubman has is, even though it's an estate format, it's still a relatively small car, and I know relatively small for any kind of, you know, proper Mini fans out there, you're not gonna really call a Clubman relatively small, but this, this is on another level. I do want to address, however, the whole using the Mini name thing. I've been doing Mini reviews since I started YouTube. My first ever review on YouTube was a Mini, and quite frankly, I am bored of the comments when people go, mm, it's not a real Mini. If you speak to any Mini owner, we all know that the classic Mini is a Mini. But that doesn't mean that the modern BMW Minis aren't great cars and don't have much of the same character that a Mini did. They just grew up and they just evolved and the Mini name and the Mini brand evolved with them. I think for some people though, the step up into a kind of SUV format like the Countryman is perhaps a step too far. And all I would say to those people is drive one and then make your mind up. Don't just look at one in a car park and think, oh, that's a big old bus, don't want to drive one of those. Have a go in one first and then make your mind up. And I think this car will change your mind because it's really very good. So. I think what we need to do is go and find some roads where I can stick it into sport mode and put that 306 horsepower engine that sat in front of me to the test. And you get a very familiar engine tone if you're a Mini JCW driver, especially if you've got the Clubman JCW that I have. It sounds so, so similar, which isn't a great surprise, to be honest. Now, I have uh, an upgraded exhaust on my car, as many of you know, I've got the Remus OPF back and it's basically straight through OPF back as well. So it does make quite a different noise. But one of the things that I think some people will find a little bit disappointing in this car is there are no pops and bangs really that I can, I can sense. I, I, I haven't had that feeling at all. Some of that sound is augmented in the cabin and it, it just sounds like a clubman, but I just think that pop and bang on overrun, and they were never real mega pops and bangs in a JCW. They were characterful noises. 
that were engineered in and, and sadly manufacturers just can't do that anymore um, because the way you engineer those noises in very often is by effectively dumping spare fuel into the fuel cycle that kind of ignites as it, as it pops out the back of the exhaust and that just isn't good for the environment and that means that doesn't happen anymore so there is a lack of character there's a little burble on startup but if you're buying one of these because you want a real amount of you know pop and bang and burble and crackle i think you're gonna be a little bit disappointed comments below by the way what do you think of a new camera setup so my, i've got a new main camera and new mic to try and improve both the pictures in car but also the audio because i've had a few bits of feedback saying my audio could be better so i always want to try and improve things so i've just spent a load of cash on a new camera love to know what you think of it but let's crack on down this road so first things first i'm in sport mode but i'm just in normal drive mode so the car's going to change itself and it feels very very similar to my car if however i want to go into the paddle shift this is for me where a slight challenge for this car kind of shows its head and we're now going to go into paddle shift um, now my problem is without a head-up display i don't have a really nice clear indicator of what gear i'm in the thing that says m3 or m4 or whatever manual gear selection i'm in is so tiny i can't see it so you have to kind of keep count in your head whereas if I had the head-up display option, which I've mentioned already, I just look out the windscreen at where I'm going and I don't have to worry too much. I can have a very quick glance at the head-up display and I just know coming in here, what gear am I in again? Ah, oh, okay, I'm in fourth. I'm just going to knock it down into third, into Ferrari corner, and then I can accelerate away. And that's why I think with this sports display, you either need to spec the head of display or for me I just think many have missed a trick here so my problem with the sports display is number one bigger gear indicator we've done that one to death number two there's a bit of real estate in front of me that has the ability to do more than it's currently doing I mean I can have some simple nav instructions up there if I'm running through the car sat nav but there's no moving map um, you know, you could maybe have like the BMW um, main TFT screen has that little the sat nav map in the middle. I could have that. I could just it could just do more. And whether the designers have just decided to go basically nice and simple and clean, I would imagine that's the case. But it's just not for me. Um, and I'd, I'd have my analog dials every day of the week and twice on a Sunday. Sorry, Mini. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. This car is no slouch. There may be a few things about it that annoy me, but my goodness me, is it quick. And the really interesting thing for me is, even though it's a big car with a high center of gravity, it still drives with a kind of Mini-esque feeling. It's got so much grunt. It doesn't, I don't want to give too much away in terms of this versus a Clubman because I'm going to do a separate video on that because they are very, very similar in so, so many respects. And I understand why there will be lots of people out there thinking, hmm, do I buy a Clubman or do I buy a Countryman? They're the grown up minis of the range. They're the practical minis of the range. They're the family car. You know, which one should I buy? But the driving dynamics of this bigger of the two the countrymen they're really really very impressive i guess we should have a quick talk about cost and spec so depending on the options you choose i think you're probably looking at kind of 37 and a half to maybe just under 40,000 pounds the options i think personally for me if I was buying one or buying a used one I'd have the pan roof which is 800 quid I'd go for the uh, the optional nav pack that gives you the head-up display I've mentioned those two um, upgraded stereos are always a nice thing this has also got the upgraded alloys just like my Clubman now diamond cut alloys look fantastic but and there is a big but they do take some looking after and if you do curb them they are quite expensive to fix 
that may well be worth thinking about for some of us. Um, there's a bike prep pack you can get for this as well. It's only £200 and it basically gives you the ability to put a bike carrier on the back. And I have to say, if I was buying a new one, I'd very, very much uh, be interested in specking that for 200 quid. You may as well. So all in all, I think if you can keep it just under the £40,000 mark, I think this is a really good value car. It goes up against things like Audi's SQ2, um, and the, the, there are, are quite a few cars in this category, but none of them are as powerful as this, none of them are as fast as this. And I think this car has this really great crossover between large practicality and when we just stick it into this corner, let's go to the paddles down a couple, chuck it in and it just goes around corners so well. Yeah, see, see that's why I buy one of these because it goes around corners so well. It really shouldn't do that. It really shouldn't. It should roll and wallow and be awful in the corners. But it's not. It's great. Brakes are really good. So I bought it on this bit of road. Lovely swap of corners and boom. The all four four wheel drive just gives it a great feeling and... <laughs> there you go. There's 45 seconds of why you should buy a Countryman JCW. Yes, all of the practicality stuff's interesting if you've got a family. Yes, you might want to know about fuel economy, 35 miles to the gallon. Yes, you might want to know about residuals and how much it costs to spec, but ultimately this car is about having a family practical car that when you want to, you can do what I've just done there. And you'll drive it and you'll have a massive smile on your face. Smiles per mile is what this car's about. And I really like it. Now, the big question is how does it compare to the Clubman? Directly, point to point. So stay tuned to the channel because I will be putting this car up against my JCW Clubman. They're almost identical in 80% of what they are. This is just bigger and fatter and wider. But I'm gonna compare things like like for like boot space. I'm gonna do like for like naught to 60 test. I'm gonna do a like for like 60 to zero test, which should be interesting. And we're gonna talk about fuel economy. We're gonna talk about handling. All the things that if you're thinking about the two, you think, oh, which should I have? You know, if you're gonna take it to the supermarket, which one would you rather have in a supermarket car park? So that's the next test. I knew this video would be relatively straightforward for me because there are so many things that are similar. I knew I'd like this car. I like the styling, I like the outside. I'm not, I'm not one of these people that gets upset because Mini have made a big car. I mean, come on people, get real. Uh, I just think it's a really good car. Anyway, massive thank you to Mini UK for letting me have the car for a week. I hope you've enjoyed this one. As I said, stay tuned to the channel because I think the most interesting video with this car will be the direct comparison with the Clubman. Um, but if you've enjoyed that one, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next build. Take care.